Just got some news in from the courthouse. Jessica Mann is off the stand. And the major breaking news is there was no redirect examination. So she was cross-examined. Uh, I think she's been cross-examined for two full days now. And that's it. She was like, oh, I cannot believe there was no redirect. So we're waiting for an update from either Chan Lee Painter or Julia Jane on what happened inside the courtroom. And we're waiting to find out who the next witness is going to be. With me on set, I am so pleased to uh, introduce Kelly Hyman. I know you've been on before, but only the first time with me. And not only are you a trial attorney, but you're in the most unique position to uh, bring us your expertise in this trial because you're also an actor. Yes, um, when I was five years old, my mom was a single mom and she was teaching Charlton Heston tennis oh, lessons. Gosh. And I was a cute Amazing. young kid. Thanks. Well, just, you're still pretty cute, Kelly Hyman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, you're beautiful as well. <laughs> and she uh, said to uh, Chuck, kind of half jokingly, but probably serious, "Can you get an, you know, help us out?" He looked at me. I smiled, and he said, "Okay, I'll get you an agent." And so That's I amazing. grew up in the entertainment business. So you uh, were an actor for a very long time, before twenty-five going years. Long, That's incredible. And so, tell us about you. I mean, this really is a unique perspective. Tell us about that predicament that all of that we're seeing before us, these young actresses uh, having become involved with Harvey Weinstein and that whole process of perhaps him preying on the most vulnerable of women. Yes, I mean, the industry is, is a very tough business, and especially for young women to go through because you are so vulnerable. And I think that we don't want to re-victimize them again, especially with the trial and having her testify, cross-examinations, three days. I mean, what this woman has gone through is a, is a lot. But, okay, but all of these women, like, why are they even engaging with him from the beginning? Okay, so before the actual grooming process begins, what is it about being an actress uh, struggling to get work that gets you in the situation? Right. You know, and, and, part, and I know it's personality driven. There's so many factors that I'm not trying to simplify this at all. But I really want you to tell us about your experience and how you see what you know, what they're going through like maybe explain it to our viewers a little more sure no absolutely so you know gr growing up in the business it's you are always told you're only as good as your last job and so you are constantly um, going out on auditions interviewing and you're getting rejections you're too tall you're too short you're too fat you're not skinny enough you're not pretty enough you're not ugly enough um, why did you read it that way and so you're getting this constant feeling of rejection which is overwhelming and emotionally a lot to take and then you have an agency you're trying to get an agent you're yeah. trying to succeed and so you know you see someone who's very you know successful and stuff like that. I mean, there are, you know, some people that um, in the industry that were rumored the casting couch, as they call it. Like, if you wanted a job in this person's film, movie, whatever, that you had to sleep with them. And it's sad, especially with the Me Too movement and women, that we have to be subjected to this. We should never have to, you know, be that way. And I don't think, you know, that it's us being... Uh, putting ourselves in that position, a lot of times the position comes to us, um, you know, because they prey on people that are vulnerable 100%. and naive. 100%. You know, this is this is what happens. This is the you know you're supposed to do this. This is how you get ahead. I completely agree with you, but I I just wanted if you compare your work as an actor and your experience of perhaps being confronted with people uh, who, you know, wanted you to lie on the casting couch for lack of a better term, uh, compared to your being a lawyer, you know, like you, you know, you studied law, you got a job, you, you know, have your own firm. I do. Right. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. And I, uh, Kelly Hyman dot com. Kelly. Ke Kelly Hyman Law Firm. Hyman Law Firm. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. I so, right. That. I mean, but you know, you know, you understand my point. Yes. My point is with act with acting you are somewhat dependent on someone else's perception of you with law you pass the exams you pass the bar you interview for a job based on your resume you get a job and then eventually you start your own law firm so how do you compare that those circumstances like right. why why does it happen in this industry why doesn't it happen in our industry that we're in now well I, I, I do think a little bit of it happens in our industry especially when women go to law firms and stuff like that um, that sure. be, that being said um, I think that 
because there's so much instability in actors. I mean, you're constantly uh, auditioning. Say you get a pilot, right? Great, I get this pilot. It doesn't get picked up. Or you, you do it, you know, a TV show and it's on, you know, one year and then you're out auditioning again, yeah. you know, going for, you know, movies and auditions. And, you know, I would go on commercial auditions, um, you know, way back when and Nicole Eggert, you know, was, yeah. was, was on the same commercial, you know, audition as me. Wow. Um, yeah. You know, and, and she was on, you know, TV and so you're constantly constantly running and hustling and, and trying to do stuff. I also did, you know, modeling. So you're running on modeling gigs and you're opening up your, your, your book and having that. And there's still, you know, some of that in the modeling industry as, as well. And you, and you would agree, there's no other industry where you face more rejection than acting. I, I agree, but that's, you know, my own personal experience. I think everybody it's agrees with constantly, that. Constantly, even modeling jobs and stuff like you sit out there, you sometimes have to wait an hour and a half. You see these beautiful, you know, people come in, you, you go, I'm not skinny enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not tall enough. But sometimes they'll audition, they'll line you up and they'll say, we want you, you, and they'll look at someone and then go, and you, the rest of you can leave. Um, you know, be putting that people in that position is very difficult. Oh, it's like being cattle or chattel, as we learn in the law, it's called. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, Kelly Hyman, really so lucky to have you here with us. We are so grateful. We're going to take a break. Uh, we're waiting for more new testimony from inside the courtroom. This is Court TV's coverage of New York versus Harvey Weinstein. Tonight on Court TV. The jury in the Harvey Weinstein rape trial has seen day after day of gripping testimony and shocking disclosures, but have prosecutors built a strong enough case to convict? Tonight, we assess the first half of this larger-than-life trial and look ahead to see what the defense needs to accomplish and what surprises might Weinstein's attorneys have in store. Closing Arguments with Vinnie Politan. Tonight, starting at 6, 5 Central on the all-new Court TV the courtroom to see if a new witness is on the stand. Something's happening inside there. And of course, we're going to keep you uh, abreast of any developments as soon as they come in. But let me remind you, there was another witness who took the stand this morning, and that was model Emanuela Posticini. Now, Emanuela was a little controversial because she was the woman who engaged in a threesome with Harvey Weinstein and Jessica Mann. And of course, the defense fought very hard to keep her out of this trial. They argued that she was a Molino witness in sheep's clothing, Whereas the judge ruled, no, we're going to let her in because she explains the history and the relationship. And the judge said on two occasions in the transcript, he used the power relationship. He used that term power to uh, explain that dynamic between Jessica Mann and Harvey Weinstein. So just as a little reminder, this is what Jessica Mann said about the threesome when she testified. Here we go. He told us to undress. She undressed. I think I had taken my top off and I expressed that I never had a threesome before. Was that true? That is true. At that point, yes. And she was, what I gathered from her broken English was that she was, she had never had a girl either or experienced that. Objection. Overruled. And she had laid on the bed and I was still standing and Harvey was telling us orchestrations like, I want you to and I said, I don't know how to do that. And I think that I grabbed her boob. And when she vocalized this, that this had not happened to her before. Objection. Overruled. Very tense. I saw myself in her. Objection. Overruled. Not being able to communicate. And I broke down. I ran out of there in the bathroom and I started crying and crying. And I was completely overwhelmed by it. Then she came to the bathroom to ask if I was okay. And Harvey seemed kind of upset. And then he was like kind of teasing me like, oh, I'll never do that again with you. And I went out and sat on the couch. And then he and her went back in the room and closed the door. And I waited. So that was Jessica Mann talking about the threesome that she engaged in with Emanuela and Harvey Weinstein. So now you be the judge. Should Emanuela Posticini have been allowed to testify? Let's take you back inside the courtroom for her testimony from earlier today. Good morning, Ms. Posticini. Good morning. Can you tell the jury what your occupation is? An actress. Where were you born and raised? I was born in Ancona and I was raised in Italy. When did you come to the United States? 2013. 
Was that the first time you were in the United States? No, I used to come. My ex boyfriend was American. I used to come the first time was 2009. In 2012 or 2013, did you come to live in the United States? Yes. At that time, did you meet a man or did you know a man named Harvey Weinstein? Yes. Can you look around the courtroom and tell us if you see Mr. Weinstein here today? Yes. Point him out for the judge and jury and describe an item of clothing he's wearing today. Stipulate to identification. Very well. The individual wearing a purple tie. Ms. Posticini, directing your attention to late February of 2013, did you have the occasion to go by the invitation of the Weinstein Company to the Soho House? Objection to leading. Overruled. Yes. And do you recall that party? Yes. Do you recall what you were wearing that day? Yes, I was wearing a long red dress. I'm going to show you a photograph which was previously marked as People's Exhibit 106. It is already in evidence. Yes. Put it on the screen. Ms. Posticini, is this a photograph of you at a party at the Soho House in late February of 2013? Yes, that is me. At that party, did you meet new people? Yes. At some point, did you meet a woman named Jessica? Yes. Do you recall who introduced you to Jessica? Harvey. Harvey Weinstein? Harvey Weinstein, yes. And did you have a great deal of time to talk to her at that party? Not really. It was just more shaking hands and just seeing her. I'm going to show you a photograph which has been previously marked in evidence as People's Exhibit Number 8. Do you recognize that photograph? Yes, I, I do. Who do you recognize that to be? Jessica. Is that the same Jessica you met at the Soho House in February of 2013? Yes, it is. Did there come a time the next day or so that you were asked to go to a different hotel to meet the defendant? Objection. Leading. Overruled. Yes. Do you recall what hotel that was? Montage Hotel. Say that again. It was the Montage Hotel. Is that also in Los Angeles, California? Yes, it is. At the, that time, where, where were you meeting the defendant? At the bar. Did you arrive at some point to the bar? Yes. Do you recall if it was morning, afternoon, evening? It was night. Did you come to the hotel by yourself? Yes, I did. Did you know what was the purpose that you were meeting the defendant for? For a drink. Did there come a point in time when you did see Mr. Weinstein at the hotel on that date? Yes. I'm going to show you an email that we have marked as People's Exhibit Number 190. May I see it? When you arrived at the bar, when you arrived at the bar that night, did you let someone know from the Weinstein Company that you were there? Yes, I did. How did you do that? How did you let them know? Email. I showed you People's Number 190-190. Does that accurately show that communication that you let someone from the Weinstein Company know you arrived at the hotel? Yes. I ask it be marked into evidence as 190. Any objection? No. Received into evidence. I'm going to ask it be, to be shown to the jury. Did you wait in the bar for a bit of time before you saw the defendant? Yes, I did. I was in the hallway. I, I cannot hear. I was, <clears throat> I was in the hallway leading to the bar. Did there come a time then when the defendant came downstairs or the defendant, you saw the defendant? Yes. By the way, Ms. Posticini, how was your English back in 2013? It was very basic. I could definitely have conversations, but definitely not as thorough. It was more of a, you know, basic English, I would say. Tell us what happened when you saw the defendant that night. Where did you go? He came down in the elevator, and he wanted me to get with him in the elevator. Then he brought me up to his room. When you got to his room, was there anyone else in the room? Yes, there was. At this time, who do you recall being there? Jessica. Was it the same Jessica you had met the night before? Yes, it, it was. Where was she in the room when you walked in? I remember seeing her on the right in the living room of the hotel room. Do you recall what, if anything, she was doing at that time? No, she was just walking, just standing in the living room of the suite. Ms. Posticini, did Jessica appear to be in any way drunk that night? Not that I recall. Were you in any way intoxicated that night? No. Did the defendant appear to be intoxicated at all that night? No. At some point, were you redirected to the bedroom area? Yes. Was that you alone or with someone else? Me with someone else. Who was that? Jessica. At that time, can you tell us what, if anything, the defendant started saying? He told us to do something. He was, yeah, 
directing us, telling us to do something together. When you say something together, was that, can you describe what that something was? I can't recall exactly what he was telling us to do. Was it something sexual? Objection. Sustained. Watch the leading, please, in this area. Well, can you describe the nature of the thing he was telling you to do? Interacting with a female. What kind of interaction? I don't remember. And where was it that you and Jessica were at this time? In the bedroom. Did there come a point in time Jessica left the bedroom? Yes. How long after the directions by the defendant did she leave the bedroom? Got to take a quick break, but our coverage of New York versus Weinstein continues right after this. We're waiting for a new testimony to be turned over to bring you some more instant replays. And we're also waiting for word from the courtroom. Uh, we understand that Chanley Painter and or Julia Janae are uh, soon in giving us an update. But while we wait, we have a very interesting issue to talk about with respect to the Harvey Weinstein accusers. And we're so lucky to have Kelly Hyman with us because, Kelly, uh, you handle these type of cases, sex trafficking, civil cases. It's a very unique area of law. And actually the first time, you know, I only know it as a criminal defense attorney, but the first time I had heard about se sex trafficking as a civil action was in this case. So tell us about that and how it works civilly. Sure, absolutely. So it's not in the criminal courtroom, it's civil, and it's based on, um, there's a lot of different cause of actions, but one is like a federal statute to protect people that were minors at the time that were sex trafficked. So just to be clear, so are we talking always federal or can it be state civil action? Or? It, it, okay. Exactly. It can be state, like for California, for example, there are certain protections um, for it. Um, so, and that's set up as well. So it can be in state court as, as well, but there are civil matters. So you're asking for compensation and not, you know, having someone be um, put in jail Perfect. because sometimes yeah. the traffickers already been in jail and stuff like that. So it's more of a civil matter to, to make the person, the, 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 the victim um, whole. So one of the, uh, I don't know if there's more than one, but the one that I'm familiar with, the sex trafficking civil lawsuit in this case, and, and you'll correct me if I'm saying this wrong, but basically it claims that Harvey Weinstein engaged in businesses like going to Cannes Film Festival. That was one of the, of the allegations that, you know, he would go there and part of the whole idea of going there was that he would then be involved with trafficking these women. It's so almost like using his business for some type of sexual gain. Does that make sense? Or no, maybe you can no, clarify. Absolutely. Okay. No, absolutely. That, that's, you know, really good point of, of, of taking, you know, the minors and, you know, taking them um, somewhere else and, and, and you know, basically um, exploiting them, unfortunately. Does it have to be minors? Because I think in his, in the lawsuit with right. Harvey Weinstein, men, the, the, I mean, the women were absolutely in their 20s and 30s right but probably at the time when it the ones that i work on at okay. the time it occurred it is you know minors however some states are extending the statute of limitations um it's how long you can bring a lawsuit um depending on certain facts and circumstances Do and you, so but you must find this interesting right that that in in the harvey weinstein case there is that sex trafficking civil suit out there. I mean, right. it's a very novel area, right. I think. No, no, absolutely. That's a very good point. It's, it's you know, going back to it, it's, it's horrible that these women are in this, you know, situation, um, you know, being young and ex exploited um, and unfortunate that they have to go through that. Do you think, and again, I, I think you have a very unique and special insight into this, do you think the jury's understanding this particular situation that a young actress goes through, this constant barrage of rejection, and then finally you have someone who is a god, a, a verifiable god in Hollywood, giving you just a tiny bit of attention. Does the jury understand that that coupled with these acts of sex right. can cause this extreme trauma in these young women? Do you think the jury's getting it? 
You know, I, I would hope so. I hope they, you know, understand that the prosecution is a, you know, smart and a good storyteller, and you have to tell the story of, you know, what the actress went through and what it's like to be, you know, an actor. Um, a lot of people, you know, don't know um, how difficult, you know, it really is. It looks very glamorous, and there are some wonderful things about it. Um, but sometimes it can be a double-edged sword where, you know, you're going on on audition and you're like, how am I going to pay my rent? You know, how oh, am I, a thousand percent, you yeah. know, dealing with these, you know, struggles of, of constantly, I, you know, heard stories about Michael Fox when he was an actor that he was selling part of his furniture, you know, before he, you know, got his big break, as they say, and you're, you know, waiting for, you know, that, that big break. I have some yeah, friends now, from, New, from New York yeah. um, back, you know, when I worked here, they're still waiting for their big break and I well, hope they get it. Yeah. And you're, and you're, you know, you're talking about selling furniture. I mean, there are young women who are selling their bodies, even young men. In fact, okay, Kelly Hyman, you're going to stick with me. Uh, folks, we have to take a break, but first we have a programming note. That's right. Tonight on Court TV, episode one of our true, I think it's episode three or four, but OJ 25, it's happening tonight. It's our new true crime series. And oh, it re airs tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern.